Welcome to the screening of uh, the film Wolves of the East at World Cinema Amsterdam. My presence here to do this short introductory talk was requested by the Cinemasia Festival, as you can see. They also asked me to do it in English, so if you don't like that, you can complain with them. Um, world Cinema. It's a very interesting term, and it's a term that we can debate uh, for a long time and quite uh, passionately, I'm sure, if we were given the time, because it's a term that says a lot about our Western views of how cinema around the globe is organized. Um, leaving aside controversial possibilities, I think one thing we can probably agree on is that world cinema as a term, and as a group, is defined by the fact that it comes from countries that do not have a large uh, professionalized national cinema industry. So it's a cinema that is sort of like uh, makeshift, that has to find its means where it can. Um, for that reason, Japan is rarely mentioned as being world cinema, because it has a very uh, organized, a very centralized film industry, and it has been one of the major oldest and most productive film industries in the world for more than 100 years. Since the 1920s, essentially, Japan has churned out at least 200 films a year, since the 1920s. That's just to indicate what a major industry it is in, in terms of world cinema. Um, the fact that everything is so centralized in the capital Tokyo, especially the past couple of decades, means that there's basically no, nothing that you could call a regional cinema, a regional filmmaking in Japan. Um, anyone who works in a region and makes sort of like home movies, amateur movies, tries to get their films into festivals in Tokyo and then from there on to go into professional filmmaking. So eventually they all converge on the Japanese capital. One interesting Exception, you could say, to this rule is the uh, filmmaker Kawase Naomi. I'm going to use the Japanese order of names, so family name first, given name second. Uh, Kawase, who comes from Nara, and Nara is uh, not far from Kyoto, but has its own identity, regional identity, because it used to be a long time ago, 1500 years ago, the very first capital of Imperial Japan. Kawase has sort of remained, or rather become, I should say, a spokesperson for the region of Nara. And increasingly in a very much more organized way besides making her own films. I mean, for a couple of years she's been running uh, the Nara International Film Festival. And from there, there's been sort of a spin-off, a film producing or at least co-producing project called Narrative. And in this project, uh, they tend to finance or partially finance films that will be filmed in the Nara region. And the idea is, of course, to, you know, to demonstrate not just the beauty, but also this presumed uniqueness of this you know, very special part of Japan. This is a pretty smart idea. I mean, Nara is not the only place where there is still something like regional film activity in Japan. There's a similar thing going on all the way in the north, the northern island of Hokkaido, where for many, many years, in a small town called Yubari, which used to be a mining town, there is the Yubari International Fantastic Film Festival. And that festival, too, sort of has uh, a function to discover new filmmakers. And the filmmaker who wins their annual competition gets a sort of scholarship fund to make their next film. The problem with Yubari is that Usually, the filmmaker who wins takes the funds back home and makes the film there, which usually means it is shot in or around Tokyo. So it doesn't benefit Yubari at all. And Yubari, just to indicate, after the mining industry went belly up, uh, the town went entirely bankrupt in 2007, and has been slowly climbing back out of this, this valley that they've been in for a long time. Carlos Quintana, who uh, is uh, one, a former 
uh, Tiger Award winner for Rotterdam Film Festival, and a familiar face at this particular festival as well. And he brings, um, it's kind of hard to say what he brings to the film in terms of a Cuban identity. There's certain references to, to Cuba, as you will see. The main character has something of a history there that remains kind of a mystery and you just have to sort of figure out yourself. But aside from that, you watch the film, and you, if you didn't know it was made by a Cuban, you probably wouldn't guess. You would think it was a Japanese film. And this is always a very interesting thing, thing with foreigners who make a film or more films in Japan. Usually when there are people who live there, there's this really wonderful English filmmaker called John Williams, who has made four or five features in Japan. And every time they say, you would never guess this was made by an Englishman. You know, he's been living in Japan for 20, 25 years, so that's probably why. But when a foreign filmmaker visits, usually it becomes, well, not always a disaster, but the foreign, the foreign point of view is then very, very obvious. Um, in Quintela's case, he, uh, sometimes he takes the position of the proverbial distant observer, but sometimes also he's really, really close to the character, especially to the main character. And I think it is largely thanks to the fact that the main uh, character is played by Fuji Tatsuya, who is a veteran film actor, very famous in Japan, and most famous internationally, I would think, because he was the main actor in uh, Nagisa Oshima, or Oshima Nagisa, I should stick to the, the name order consistently, Oshima Nagisa's In the Realm of the Senses, a controversial film from the 1970s about an amour fou uh, that contained uh, non simulated sex scenes. Some 15 years ago, he made a kind of comeback internationally, at least, in uh, uh, Bright, what was it called? Bright Future? Yes, Bright Future by uh, Kurosawa Kiyoshi. And now we see him in this uh, rather interesting film, and his presence is uh, very much magnetic, I think, in the sense that you're with this man all the while. And he plays a hunter who himself is haunted by one, and perhaps even more, ghosts from the past his own past as well as the past of the region of Nara, which you're about to find out, and of course the giveaway is the title, but uh, it's not perhaps not as, uh, as literal as it seems. I um, hope you will enjoy this uh, very interesting hybrid of, I guess you can call it world cinema, Wolves of the East. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoy the film.